probably heard already that our world is on a one-way path to destruction. I am here to tell you, however, that those individuals are wrong. We as humans, with our current and advancing technology, will eventually find solutions to our ever-growing problems, such as food shortages, energy shortages, and overcrowding. Our negatively fed minds are filled with so many misconceptions that we often overlook the advancements we have made in society. With more than 127 million people living in the small island of Japan, and more people living in the state of California than the entire country of Canada, parts of our world are becoming severely overcrowded. But there are some crafty ways to pre prevent such urban crowding. For example, there's one program that the government of Canada already uses called Northern Living Allowance, or NLA. NLA states that Northern Canada is divided into two zones, Zone A and Zone B, which include Northern and Intermediate Zones respectively. The Northern Zone consists of communities that are very far north, such as Atlin, BC, while the Intermediate Zone consists of larger communities that are a bit more south, such as Fort St. John and Dawson Creek, BC. The incentive is that the government will pay $8.25 per day to people living in the Northern Zone and $4.13 per day for people living in the Intermediate Zone after they have lived in this prescribed zone for a period of over six months. This is one way to discourage urban overcrowding and to get future generations to appreciate Earth's backyard before it may be changed forever. Another possible alternative to this would be an inland living allowance. Like the NLA, there should be an incentive for people to move from larger cities near major bodies of water and oceans to smaller cities and towns inland in the less densely populated areas. The incentive could even be as small as a decrease on property taxes or something to file on your tax return, like the NLA. This would also take into account that since over 25% of the world is at risk of rising sea levels, this would be a positive action for when sea levels do rise and displace a very large amount of the population. With increased populations comes an increase in food demands. By 1798, a man named Thomas Malthus predicted that a food shortage was in our future as populations grow exponentially but food supply can only grow arithmetically. However, for years people have argued that with developing technologies we can genetically modify food to grow it faster and we have been successful in increasing the yield of plants that have enhanced nutritional value and the best genes to ensure survival. GM foods do have their setbacks, unfortunately. Pest control genes can harm non-target organisms and affect ecosystems and their food chains. Target pests that are affected may develop resistance after long-term exposure. Another issue is crossbreeding to give unwanted plant species traits such as herbicide resistance, cold tolerance, and drought tolerance. Superweeds could develop, which could affect the amount of food we can grow. There is also the argument that GM foods are unsafe for humans, but studies only become more thorough and regulations more strict to ensure the safety of humans. In fact, us humans need genetically modified foods to meet the needs of our population. Genetic modification allows for the best traits to come forth in plants, such as pest and disease resistance, tolerance of colder weather and times of drought, and even allow for weekly nutritional foods to contain more necessary minerals and vitamins. Lastly, GM foods are being engineered to contain edible vaccinations, furthering our understanding of medicine and allowing developing countries to get the medical help they need. Scientists therefore do not believe that GM foods are harmful, besides possible allergies that individuals may have, because they put forth their effort toward engineering the most nutritional food with the best genes in the abundance that we need to feed the soon-to-be 9 billion people of this earth. Dr. Stephen DeCanio stated that with six strategically placed solar stations around the globe, we could provide power to the entire world without utilizing vast quantities of land. We would include a station in the Sahara and Mojave deserts in the Middle East, just off the coast of South America, the southwest corner of Australia, and a final station in northern China. These strategic locations would be able to supply power to each continent in which they are based, hopefully reducing the amount of wasted energy via traveling long distances. This could also solve issues found in developing countries who aren't yet faced with the severity of the unavoidable energy crisis that the first world countries seem to have laid out for them. The countries of South and Central America, with their lackluster reliability for their power, would be amongst the first to notice an uptake in supply. In adapting to using these energy sources, we can rest assured that the people of tomorrow will be able to continue leading lives similar to ours with regards to technological usage and availability, if not even more so. Our advancements have helped us to overcome many issues such as the predicted food crisis. However, we are constantly furthering our knowledge and developing new ways to solve future problems. We are living in a time of opportunity and we must take advantage of this as soon as possible to maintain a sustainable world. Thank you.